Hello and welcome back to Polytutes. In today's lesson, we are going to be taking a look at the flower example from the uh, the previous tutorial that we've done. We were doing the pipe bulge, which is over on the left there. And then the next video, we'll do that rug deformation. But for this one, it's just this flower thing, which um, pretty much the same principles as the uh, the bulge. But we also want to affect the vertex normals going in the other way. So we want something to be able to uh, to grow out, like to to expand from nothing rather than to expand from its original. Uh, maybe that doesn't make any sense. Let's just go and do the tutorial and maybe everything will be all right. Okay, so here we are in a new scene. I've wiped all of the shader stuff so we can start fresh. And if you want to follow along with this, with this exact same model, I do have the FBX and the textures available for free on my Patreon. So feel free to grab that, follow along. Uh, otherwise, we just go ahead and as usual, you know, create a new shader, amplify, surface shader. Give it a name, open it up. Just to kick things off, I'm just going to put in a texture sample node by holding the T key and clicking, or just press the space bar and that will bring up the uh, the search window and then just search for texture. I'm just going to put this in the albedo and then save the shader because uh, I don't yet have a material made. So I'm just going to save this, close it down, and then create a material from this shader. And then we can apply it to our model. And then from that point on, we know we don't need to worry about it. You know, you can go ahead and open up the shader again and you can work on it and you know that whatever changes you make will of course affect the material, which is applied to the object, yada, 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 everything's okay. So if you've seen the last tutorial, then the start of this is essentially this, the exact same. We're going to put down a UV coordinates node with the U key and then click or again, just search. And we're going to put the V slot into the B slot of a subtract. And then we'll create a float one and just give this a name. I think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll call it grow for this example, because that's what we plan to do to the mesh. Uh, and we'll put that into the A slot of the subtract. So again, it's the exact same as before. It's just a, um, a vertical gradient that's, you know, white at the bottom, black on the top, and we can just control the amount that it goes up. And so I'm just going to put this into the debug option of the amplify shader, which is uh, it's a handy little thing if you don't want to put this into any other slot. Emission would work well, but the debug works fine. Just to have a look at what this is doing to the actual model. So this is very similar to the previous tutorial we've done in that uh, it's very much affected by the UVs, like the whole gradient effect doesn't work if the UVs aren't set up in a specific way. Um, and so again, we'll just hop over to Blender real quick and I'll just show you kind of what the setup here is. Pretty much the same as uh, the last one we did. You can see that everything's arranged in a vertical way. And I've also duplicated these flowers. So, you know, everywhere you see the yellow petals and the purple petals and whatnot, you know, the same colors, they're the exact same thing. Like they use the exact same UV space and they're orientated in a way that, you know, as this gradient moves up this texture, the first ones to appear, you know, are at the bottom. So those flowers will start to bloom. And then I have this mid range and then the top range, which actually will bloom as you can see, because it's right at the top, it will bloom right after the stem itself has already finished. It's a nice effect, you know, it's not everything growing at the same time, you know, it's not just like a cutoff effect, it's not like a, uh, a world space gradient that affects the whole thing, you know, we want that spiral to happen, we want things to grow at uh, a different time, and this is just a, it's a nice way to be able to control that, just with the UVs. Anyway, let's move on to actually creating the shader now. We can just add in a vertex normal node, which will basically be used to control, you know, the normals of our verts, similar to before, but we want this to go two ways, but we'll cover that in a bit. Um, and we will pre-saturate this one. So we'll get a saturate in, and that goes in after the multiply. This just ensures that our values are actually like clamped down. You can use a clamp, but I think saturate is uh, more efficient. Uh, so then we'll feed that into uh, a multiply, which is you know, multiplied by our vertex normal. And we can stick that straight into the, the local vertex offset and make sure that you take out the debug layer there by just alt and left clicking on the line. Uh, so now let's go and see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see that it is pushing out the verts, which is kind of good, but uh, it's not quite what we want. We're able to make the verts expand here, but we want to start from nothing um, and then expand out to the mesh's original size. And you'll notice that even if we go into the minus range in the grow option, you know, it's not going into the minus, like the mesh isn't shrinking. And that's kind of what we want, you know, the effect we want to start from a zero 
and then have it expand out to the mesh's original size. We don't want to start with the mesh on its actual size and then make it even bigger. So we'll come back to the shader now and what we want to do to, uh, to cause this mesh to you know, contract in on itself is we'll add in another multiply after the multiply that we already have and we'll put in another vector one and this will be our contraction amount basically. I think I call it push pull because you can push with it or you can pull with it and the uh, pull is what I want to do. I probably should have called it contraction but you know it doesn't matter. One important thing to note is I am making this node a property so we can tweak the values on the material itself. Uh, it'll just be easier rather than have to jump back and forth in the shader. And I'll start by just giving it a value of like minus 0.1. So now you can see we do have the contraction working, but we do need to reverse the gradients because at the moment it's contracting, but in the way that we don't want it to, it's uh, you know it's starting to shrink as it goes up the mesh, whereas we want it to grow as it goes up the mesh. So that's an easy enough fix. The other problem is, of course, is that we're seeing it once it's you know completely inverted because it's not reducing down to zero per se. It's actually you know it's going into the minus. So we will need a way to mask that out as well. So for our first issue, we just need to actually swap the float and the texture coordinates around it in the subtract so now it's just going the other way like we're subtracting from the other direction because now if you see what's happening it is growing up the mesh which is exactly what we want but like i said before we are seeing the uh the inverted amounts like the minus amounts right at the top there and that's what we want to mask out so we need to introduce some uh, some alpha cutoff here and if you come over to the output node here without anything selected you can change in the blend mode the render type to be a transparent cutout and now this will allow us access to the cutout option and all we want to do is just invert the gradient that we already have and just throw that straight into the opacity mask and that is it i mean that's kind of it as you can see we already do have you know something a lot better working but this is where it gets a little bit fiddly in that you do have to tweak some numbers here and my advice is for the, uh, the push-pull amount, I would try to keep that as low as possible, you know, like 0 0.01 or 0 0.02. Like if you start going too far with this, things are going to look a bit crazy. And obviously, I have to point out, it's going to change depending on the mesh because this is quite a thin mesh anyway. So we only need a thin amount. If you're trying to contract down something absolutely gigantic, then, you know, of course, you're going to need stronger values. The other thing to pay attention to is the, the mass clip value. And this is given to us by default whenever we use a, a shader that has a transparent cutout applied to it. I would advise to try to stay as close to like the 0.5 mark as possible. Like, you know, you can go up to, I'd say, 0.7 or down to about 0.3. So you need to try and find a nice range. And for me, I think it was about, you know, like the 0.65 or 0.7 in the mass clip value and about minus 0.1 for the push pull. This does mean that the grow amount, the actual slider we use to uh, to grow this, it will start from a minus amount. And that minus amount is going to be dependent on the mask clip value. So if I have, for example, a mask clip value of 0.7, my starting grow amount will be minus 0.3 because that's the difference between the mask clip value and the uh, grow value, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So, you know, if you have mask clip value of 0.5 in this example, you would need to start at minus 0.5 on the grow. And if you had a clip value of 0.9, you would need to start at minus 0.1. I hope that makes sense. But if you did want to change this so that you are always going from a zero to one value, you just need to do a remap and you specify, you know, the old values and the new values. Just make sure you put your original slider back to zero to one because that, you know, that is the property that's visible on the actual material. But the remap will define what the values actually are. So that will do it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope it's proven of some use. And like I was saying at the start of the video, uh, next time we will be doing that rug deformation example. And again, just to mention the, uh, the screenshot of the shader nodes and the FBX files for this tutorial are freely av available on my Patreon. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.